Today I'm going to be doing a Cricut video all about frequently asked questions and I thought I would put this video together for the purpose of beginners if you are new to using Cricut or unsure if you want to buy one or if you have one and you're yet to use it or feel a little bit intimidated I thought I would collate all of the questions that I frequently get asked and that I see kind of on the internet um, so that it's all in one place for you guys. So before I get started, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you are a new user for Cricut and if you'd like some more beginner style videos. So in this video, I have 15 frequently asked questions to share with you and I'll try and keep it as simple as possible and answer in the easiest way. So question one, I get asked this a lot on Instagram and on YouTube and it is what is the difference between the machines? Obviously, if you've brought a machine, you can skip this one but I thought I would start with this for the purpose of people watching that haven't yet brought a machine and they're wondering what is the difference between the machines and what one do you go for. Now, it's pretty straightforward, but obviously there's different price points which can kind of gauge kind of where they sit in terms of your craft level or what to expect from them. So the first machine is the Cricut Joy. Now this is essentially a beginner friendly, the lowest cost machine on the market and also the smallest. The max material width to fit through the joy is 5.5 inches, but it can cut up to 20 feet long. This is a perfect little machine for quick and easy everyday projects. If you have a small space, so you don't have a lot of crafting space in your room or your dining table, wherever it is you would be crafting from. So the joy can cut up to 50 plus materials, and this changes all the time. Cricut are constantly releasing new materials, but it cuts about 50. And the different tools that you can get for the Cricut, there's two different tools, the cutting tools and pen tools. So great for vinyls, card, and all those kind of materials as well. I will make sure I put a list of those in the description box below so it's a bit more thorough for you. Joy also has something called a smart material which is specifically designed for the Joy machine and it just minimalizes any fuss because you don't need any of the cutting mats that you would get with the other Cricut machines. Also with the Cricut Joy, it now has its own app. So the Cricut Joy app is essentially like Cricut Design Space, which I have some questions on in a second, but the Cricut Design Space is what you would cut from or make your project from, if you like, to send it to the machine. So how does it differ to the other machines is probably what you're wondering by now. So the Cricut Explore Air 2, this is kind of the next machine up if you like. It's the one that is really popular. I've had mine for about three years now, although I don't tend to use it as much anymore because I have the maker sat behind me and I'll explain the kind of the differences between the two of those because they're the, the most similar looking machines in terms of size, whereas the Joy is almost a standalone because of how small it is, but also because it has its own materials like the smart materials. Although you can use the materials with the Joy as well, but it cuts a lot less, so up to 50 materials. Whereas the Cricut Explore Air 2 on 100 plus materials, so you're going up a kind of benchmark in the crafting realm with the Cricut Explorer 2. There's a lot more available for you with this machine. It covers a wide range of DIY and hobbies that you would be looking at. Paper, vinyl, uh, heat, heat transfer vinyl. Um, you can score with it. You can uh, use it for writing, uh, infusible ink. There's so many things that you could do with the Explorer 2. It's up to two times faster than the Joy for cutting and writing. It also has the print then cut capability, which is essentially how you make stickers. And so you could print your own stickers and cut them with the Explore Air 2 and the makeup, but you can't do that with the Joy. And you could connect it via Bluetooth and USB directly to your laptop or device, unlike the Joy, which is just Bluetooth. Okay, and then lastly, the Maker. So the Maker is kind of like the pro model of Cricut. So it's like the, the highest price point of the machines available. It's pro in performance in terms of versatility of the materials that you can cut. You can cut up to 300 different materials. And when I say cut, there's also engraving, there's the rotary blade you can use for fabrics. It's got a wide scope of possibilities. You can cut, write, score, and other pro effects like the foiling 
and other things like that. The rotary blade, like I mentioned, for fabrics. It has a double tool holder, commercial grade cutting technology, up to two times faster for cutting and writing, and it's ten times more powerful to cut hundreds of materials. It also has the print and cut capability, and its connectivity is by Bluetooth and USB. So I know that's quite wordy, and it's a little bit tricky to kind of get your head around, so I'm going to insert a little graphic that I'll make that kind of sums up in a nutshell but hopefully that will just give you a good summary of what to expect. So just to summarise, the Cricut Joy is great for beginner level, everyday hobbyists, doing uh, small little projects, up to 20 feet long but 4 inches, 5.5 4, inches wide. Good for paper crafts, card making, vinyl, heat transfer vinyl and pens and things like that. Then the Explore Air 2 is the kind of middle ground machine if you want to have something a little bit more advanced, cups over 100 materials and it's two times faster. And then the Maker is essentially the pro level which is why the price point is a little bit higher but it does everything that you could possibly think of and yeah it is just that, that step up, that more advanced crafting kit. So number two, I'm going to whiz through the next ones because they're a little bit quicker to answer. That first one was uh, quite hefty. Number two is, are the mats, the cutting mats, reusable? And if so, how do you clean them? This is an example of the cutting mats when they've been used and loved. I will do a little close up of these. So you can see the fabric one's got a lot of like fluff sort of stuck on it. And then this one's been used for card and I've got like card sort of bits on it as well. You're glad to know that they are reusable, you just have to wash them and it's as simple as using a little bit of baby shampoo on them in the bath or in the shower. Just give them a, a gentle rub with the baby shampoo and rinse them off and let, let them air dry. So don't try and dry them with a towel or anything like that. Let them air dry and they will have a residual stickiness to them so you can reuse them. So it's pretty great and I also get asked how how often do you need to clean them or when do you need to replace them? Well, try washing them first with baby shampoo and if you're finding that they're still not, they've still not got any sticky left or they're really damaged or scored, then maybe it's time to replace them. Question number two I get asked all the time because I do a lot of my tutorials feature permanent vinyl and permanent vinyl on mugs or cups. Now I get asked, is this dishwasher safe? The answer is no. It's not dishwasher safe, however the permanent vinyl lasts a very very long time. The best method to look after your cups, if you're obviously drinking and using them and they need to be washed, is to try and hand wash them gently just in, on the inside, around the edges. Try to keep your design away from the edge if possible as it just makes it a little bit easier to obviously clean. Question number four is can you make stickers? I get a lot of questions about can you make stickers? I actually personally haven't made them yet, which I know is mad because I have so many ideas for stickers that I want to make. can use the print and cut feature on Cricut Explorer 2 and Maker machines. And essentially what you would do is print your design from the Cricut design space from a printer, so like a normal home printer, and it creates a black line around the print and cut stickers so that when you feed it into the Cricut machine, it recognises that it's using the print and cut feature with that black line and it can su it can and it can line up where it needs to cut. I will do a separate tutorial on this, although there are hundreds of amazing print and cut tutorials on YouTube. I've got all the way to question five and I haven't answered this yet, which I probably should have start off with, and that is what do you need to download? I get a lot of people on my videos asking, what is this thing that you've mentioned that you need to download? Okay, so when you get your machine, if this is the first time that you're opening your machine or you're considering buying a machine, you will need to download the Cricut Design Space software. So you can download this on a laptop, a tablet, a phone, and you can download it on pretty any software, so Apple, PC. Go on the Cricut website and there's a free download link on there. It's really easy to find, however I will link it below for you guys so it's all in this video for you in the description box. Question six that I get asked is, do I need to subscribe to the Cricut Design Space? No, you don't. The answer really is simple. You don't need to. However, I'm not trying to upsell or anything like that. As a Cricut user, I absolutely rely on the Cricut Design Space, to be honest, and being a subscriber to it. So what that means is you pay monthly to get access to hundreds and thousands of projects, images, fonts, 
everything that you need to essentially use the Cricut, like to make the full most of it, is available on a subscription. There are free fonts, there are free images, and you can upload your own images, but I just highly recommend having a subscription if you can, um, if you can afford it. I'm not 100% sure what the cost is at the moment, but I will leave it in the description box um, or on the screen. But honestly guys, it's fantastic and they're constantly, constantly updating and adding new images, new projects and it's just an amazing tool to have because you've got all of these things available to you to use. Question 7 is kind of following on from that and it's can you upload your own images? And yes, you can. So it depends really what that image is for, what the purpose of it is for. So. For example, if you're using vinyl, uh, heat transfer vinyl and things like that that's cutting it out with a blade, then a more simplistic image, whether that's a line drawing or a kind of shape or something, if you've got your own images, you can upload them. If it's a complex image of, say, I don't know, a family photo or an illustrated design or something you've made on Illustrator, Photoshop, etc., you can still upload it to the design space and you can either use the print and cut uh, function which is to make your stickers with your own design or you can use say a simple design maybe some shapes maybe you've got some hand lettering that you scanned in and, and uploaded and what uh, Cricut will do is you can cut out the background to make it see-through background essentially you're creating a PNG if you um, are familiar that's an image without a background and then you can cut it, you can use it on design space and you can use your own images, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, definitely have a play around with that and uh, lots of fun that can be had with creating your own things. Question number eight is what printer do you use? So obviously with print and cut, you will actually need a printer outside of Cricut. Cricut isn't like an inkjet printer. Um, I think a lot of people get a little bit confused with that. They don't know what Cricut really is. So, and I have just got a HP NV at home printer. Um, standard, it's about five years old. Um, so yeah, you just need any old printer that prints, you know, laser jet or ink prints. Question number nine is where can I buy materials in the UK? Obviously if you're watching this from America or anything like that then it, it differs. Um, but in the UK you can use Hobbycrafts, they have a wide range of Cricut supplies. If anything I think they're probably the best supplier in the UK in my opinion. Um, obviously Amazon, which uh, if you've got Amazon Prime, even better because it can come really quickly. And then also John Lewis. So they're like the three kind of main ones in the UK, but more and more people are starting to stock Cricut as well. So question 10 is, I get asked kind of loosely, loose questions saying like, oh, my, uh, my cut didn't cut properly, it didn't cut through the vinyl, I had to cut it a few times. Why isn't it cutting properly? And what I would suggest is double checking, depending on what machine you've got. If you've got the Maker or the Joy, you have to set the material when you're getting through to the cut process. With the Cricut Explorer 2, you've obviously got the little dial, so you can change it. But with that dial, I would actually often just keep it on custom and then change the material in the design space, because then it's a little bit easier to control it. And then there's actually a drop down option to say to cut less and more. So if you're finding that you've done a cut and it's not cutting properly, and play around with the settings a little bit and you'll find what works for you. But a little tip with that is if you're unsure and, you've, and you're cutting a new material for the first time, then just do a test cut, do a tiny little, insert a little shape like a heart or a circle or something like that and just pop it in your machine to test cut it. And if you know that it's, it's done that test perfectly, you can move on to your bigger designs. That way you're not wasting any material. Question 11 is do I need to use Cricut branded materials? And the answer is no. Again, you don't need to use Cricut branded materials. I know sometimes the cost can add up for things, but you really can use any material in it. One thing I would say with using unbranded materials is the settings can like differ and it can change and sometimes it just means that you are you might end up wasting materials. So just be aware that if you're using unbranded materials, yes you can still use them, but they might sometimes differ uh, the cut settings and things like that. So number 12 is how often do I need to change the blade? So we, so the most used kind of tool, I guess, in the machine is the fine point blade. Now, again, this really does vary depending on the material you're cutting, how often you're using your machine, and so many other variables. But I would say, 
just uh, little tips if you like if you take your blade out and just push it down you can check because sometimes if it's doing a blunt cut it might just be that it's got debris or like some kind of like fluff or something around the blade so you can just clean it off and usually that that kind of fixes the issue but I probably change mine every three four months and I craft probably weekly so that kind of gives you a rough idea but they can last months and months so it's just if you're starting to get rough edges on your cuts or they're blunt cuts or they're not kind of cutting uh, you know consistently throughout the entire project then it might be that it's starting to blunt and it could be time for a replacement but just check to make sure there's no debris or anything around it and question 13 is how much do they cost now it, it differs depending where you are in the world so if you're in the UK, US or anywhere else then obviously Cricut machines can differ in cost and depending on where you're buying it from but I've kind of put a rough guideline of the Cricut Joy which is the cheapest machine to the Maker which is the most expensive machine at the bottom so you kind of get a benchmark on what you're going to be spending. Question 14 is what's an essential materials list for using the Cricut? Now for me, the essentials really to get you started, if you're using the Joy, the Cricut Explorer 2 or the Maker, is you will need some cutting mats. So the green and the blue are my most used cutting mats, I don't tend to use the pink or the purple one. These are kind of your standard, standard mats for multi-purpose projects. The blue is great for paper projects and the green is great for vinyl. And then also I would highly recommend getting yourself a accessories kit. I have the Cricut one, which includes the scraping tool, these little like tweezers, scissors, um, a weeding tool, which is my most used, most loved tool of all time for the Cricut. Highly recommend getting one of those. And then a kind of little scrapey tool as well. And last but not least, question number 15, is does Cricut projects create a lot of waste? So does the materials create waste and what to do with any scrap materials? So yes, the Cricut can produce a bit of waste with your projects, but you just learn to be a bit savvy so you save you know, the materials. And like I said, doing test cuts really helps with waste and things like that. Um, and then also I actually tend to save some really small pieces of vinyl, heat transfer vinyl card, you know, things that, the off cuts if you like. And I save them and I have a little drawer, you can have them in an envelope depending on how much you're cutting or using, and you just savour them and keep them. Now a really handy way to use up your scraps is to use the snap mat feature on the mobile app version of the Cricut Design Space. It's really, really cool. What you do is you just attach your scraps to the mat and then you can take a photo of the mat in the snap mat feature and you essentially can place your images or the thing that you're cutting exactly where the vinyl is placed on the mat so you can use up those scraps in a really user friendly way which is just I think so cool. So that is it, I really hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was super helpful for you if you are a brand new person to Cricut you're a beginner, you've just got your machine, whatever it is, I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to leave a comment and let me know if you're excited to get started with Cricut and thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!